Hi, welcome to Learn Cocos TV episode number six. One small script for man, and I suppose one giant leap for developer kind. Um, I'd like to give you a demonstration of Cobalt script today, um, how to create a scene with uh, Cobalt 2D and animate stuff. Um, and I hope I still have some time at the end to um, show you the Cocos 2D webcam viewer, which I upgraded to use asynchronous uh, texture loading and um, maybe a few words about the new Cobalt 2D release. So let's get started with um, Cobalt script. I already prepared a script file, which is an empty scene. And um, if I run this, I just get, well, kind of expected an empty scene here. I used a Mac um, build for this example because it uh, loads faster than the um, simulator. So let's add a sprite here, which is done by just writing sprite. And um, let's see, what do we need for a sprite? We need, of course, um, or we may need a name. This is maybe new for a couple of developers. Um, you usually have tags. You can also add a tag if you want, um, if you want to still rely on the tag thing. But um, I think names are just more descriptive. And um, you can use this later to access your sprite um, in code as well as in Lua. Um, but most importantly, you need a sprite file. Um, right now I'm naming those properties based on the cocos 2 d initializers. Um, maybe I'll uh, rename them respectively. Um, you can also have alias names for uh, those parameters. Um, so let's add an alien PNG here. And what else do we need? Um, of course a position would be nice. Um, this is simply another Lua table here with, um, let's say, 100, 100 is fine. Um, if you want, you can also use the named parameters and say x is 100, y is 100, um, that works too. So save it, run it, and let's see what we got. Ta-da! There's an alien here. Now, um, what do you do if you want to have like let's say 300 sprites um well you could just copy and paste but uh, copy and paste is just very very bad style for example um imagine you would want to um change a property like position for 300 sprites that would be a waste of time to do this for 300 instances so you need um or you use um some lua logic to iterate over 300 sprites and oops, I was wrong. And um, create simply 300 sprites. Now we need a extra table for this local lots of spiders because I'm adding spiders. Um, this creates a new table um, where I can add those sprites in. And I just use those lots of spiders. Um, in case you're wondering, this editor is Multron. Uh, Sorry, Smoltron is the other editor that I, that I use. Um, this is Sublime Text 2, of course. And I think it's pretty neat for Lua editing, except for those indentations. Need to get them right. Um, so, again, I need a sprite file. This time I use Spider PNG. Um, I take a position, which is a random position. Don't worry about this. Um, I just created a Lua function over here. That's why I have spider calling a uh, do file spider Lua, and I have this uh, random velocity, random position functions here, just to make this uh, demo a bit faster. And I suppose uh, I could give this a name too. Um, don't have to, but uh, doesn't hurt. Um, and in this case, I can just use a bit of Lua magic and concatenate a string. In this case, I'm using the i variable, which contains a number between one and 300, and just add this to the string. So I have spider, um, what's the sign called, this character? I don't know, spider number one to 300. And um, finally, I need to add this to the scene, of course. Um, now. I have this let's lots of spiders um, table, so how to uh, put this in? I simply unpack it, which is a built-in Lua function, and write lots of spiders. 
and there you go that should add about 300 sprites spiders to be precise to the screen let's see yeah right 300 sprites randomly positioned great now um, well they don't really do anything so let's animate them um, let's see um, for animation or specifically for anything that acts on a node itself um, I have those abilities Abilities are similar to actions, um, except that they don't um, vanish, they don't go away um, when they, they've done their job. Uh, abilities are um, basically actions that keep on running, and one of those actions is a movement ability, or one of those abilities, um, whose uh, only parameter is a velocity, which basically animates uh, the node. Um, just by adding a velocity every frame and another one another uh, helper function I created is random velocity which just gets a random velocity and um, let's run this and we get hopefully some oh <laughs> okay that's um, of course not what I intended because I added the abilities to the alien instead of the spiders. So um, terribly sorry for this, but <laughs> um, lucky for me, this also presents a great opportunity to tell you that uh, abilities, of course, work for all nodes. And let's run this again. Yes, right. They just move in a random direction and just keep on going because the ability is um, continuously running. And so, well, eventually they'll all be gone from the screen so um, we'd like to or I'd like to um, keep them on the screen a little bit longer and add this ability um, restrict position ability um, in this case might be useful to uh, say that abilities can of course also be disabilities and in this case um, I want to restrict the uh, movement of each spider to an allowed area, um, which I can just uh, use x20, y20, um, width 280 about, and height um, should be 440. Again, um, if you find this style verbos, um, you can also just uh, leave out those uh, names and just write 20, 20, 280, 440 and gives the same rectangle and let's run this and we should see the spiders staying on the screen yeah well um, they kind of stay on the screen um, but maybe <laughs> that's not that's not ideal um, so what else can we do we can add behaviors and behaviors are essentially um, quite similar to abilities, but they have a um, more a formal. Um, they are formally a bit different um, than abilities in that they are supposed to handle um, or reference either other abilities or other nodes um, or other systems um, like you know sound or whatever so basically abilities act on the node itself and they are self-contained they don't need any external references um, for example updating the nodes uh, position every frame you don't need anything else for that but um, if you want a behavior that um, changes the velocity every time a spider um, uh, reaches its um, allowed area and then you need to reference both of the above abilities and for that I have the invert velocity at movement border behavior um, hopefully I got a better name for that but I think you can imagine what that does um, it doesn't take any parameters it simply um, takes the uh, restrict position ability um, which is uh, here in code um, does a lot of checks if the um, movement uh, the, the position has uh, reached a certain border and if it does it simply sets a flag or multiple flags um, and uh, the behavior checks that 
um, if uh, it did exceed left border, right border, um, it takes the movement ability and inverts basically the uh, um, velocity of that particular uh, direction or axis. So with the velocity and movement border behavior added, um, we should see bouncing sprites here. And voila, you got it. Bouncy sprites, uh, bouncy spiders. And um, just to add a little bit of um, excitement to this, um, this is not the only way um, you can animate stuff on the screen. Um, you can also um, write this entirely in Lua and I also prepared something for that. Um, there's a init function which we should call. Again all those parameters are work in progress. Um, create spider state machine. This is where this state machine comes into play and this is also defined in this um, spider Lua file and let's have a look at that. Um, we have a create spider state machine which sets some parameters, a velocity in particular, and um, simply runs a non-stop event. That one-time event is uh, actually not needed. You can remove that. And this non-stop event simply calls an action, has no conditions, runs every frame, and it calls this uh, function, um, this um, node add position action, which is implemented in Objective C here. Um, add position, and as you can see, it does a very similar job to the uh, um, behavior. And if I run this now, well, get basically the same result. And um, since that's not the only way, and not not only the second only way, um, whatever um, you can also call a Lua function directly every frame or whenever however you like it. Um, in this case I call the function move sprite and uh, it calls the function move sprite um, with self which is a table containing information about the current node um, and the it is usually a reference to the objective C object identifier or it type and um, well as you can see it also does uh, quite the same job of moving um, the object around, gets the node position and sets it later on after modifying it. Um, so if we run this, should see a very similar result again. I also uh, prepared a video for you to show you um, the Cobalt Script demo running on an iPhone 3G. Um, let's have a look. This is an example of the Cobalt Script demo app. Um, 300 sprites, all sprite batch running on an iPhone 3G at around 57 frames per second. Okay, so um, I hope you like this example. Um, uh, some other time I'll show you more about the state machine and how this works and how you would use it and where it's useful. And um, now I'd like to get move over to the iDev blog day, I think. Let me check. Here, yeah. yeah. Um, I updated the uh, webcam viewer, the Coco Studio webcam viewer, um, to use asynchronous texture loading. And um, you can also all read uh, the differences in this uh, article, this, uh, this project here, and it's already running in the simulator. And I added this um, moving sprite down here to just to show um, how the frame rate reacts to uh, loading the textures. Um, you see it jumping around when something gets loaded and this is currently running in the asynchronous mode. You can actually um, uh, see very well how the cars are driving by and um, for webcam it has a pretty good frame rate and if I switch over to a synchronous mode just by clicking on the screen you'll notice that the um, moving sprite makes those pauses because um, whenever you load a texture synchronously um, you block the entire app until the work is done. Um, with asynchronous uh, texture loading um, uh, you have a better uh, chance to keep running, keep updating the um, screen and um, the, well, it's not as noticeable um, if you update uh, or download files from the net and 
it just gives you a much smoother frame rate as you can see and asynchronous is just more fluid